Hey up everybody, welcome back to the Aldo Cycling YouTube channel where today I'm going to be doing a preview of the Vuelta San Juan. This is going to be the first race for a lot of high profile riders this year, including the likes of Remco Avenapool, Fabio Jakobsen, but also the return of Egan Bernal. And in this race is going to be quite a lot of sprints and maybe probably just the one GC stage. But let's go and take a look firstly at the stages and then I'll talk about who I think is going to win each stage and also give a podium prediction at the end of the video. So let's start off, like I said, there are going to be quite a lot of sprints and the first one starts on stage one around San Juan. A very unchallenging stage with only one category three and category four climbing there, 144 kilometers long. And what this gives us a chance to do is look at the respective lead out strengths of some teams. So as far as I can tell, I think that Sudar Quickstep have the strongest lead out in this race. Jakobsen is their sprinter and he's been led out by Michael Morkouf. And then probably Yves Lampart will be the second to last man. And given what he did last year, I expect Avonapool to probably get involved with the lead out as well. He did that quite a lot in the early season last year. And then you'll also have Seri and Jan Hurt probably controlling the pace of the peloton throughout the day. Bora Hansgrohe do provide a lot of competition to this though, with Sam Bennett as their main sprinter, with Van Poppel, who is arguably one of the strongest lead out men in the world. He will be leading him out, but they also have Ryan Mullen and also Jonas Koch as well. So that's a very strong lead out, I think which will contest Sudar Quickstep very strongly. And I think those two are the premier sprinting teams in this race. You also have other sprinters like Gaviria with his new team, Team Movistar. So we'll see how he can go. Elia Viviani with the Ineos Grenadiers. Sam Wellsford with Team DSM. Giacomo Nizzolo with Israel Premier Tech. And also Peter Sagan with Total Energy. So there are plenty of high quality sprinters in this race. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see them go head to head multiple times throughout this week. Although saying that, I do think the winner of stage one will be Fabio Jakobsen because I think they have the strongest lead out. Stage two is more challenging because there is a category one climb which goes up to 1,500 meters. However, the gradients going up here are not very severe, probably only a few percent, and therefore it won't be difficult enough to get rid of a lot of the main sprinters, namely Jakobsen and Bennett, who aren't renowned to be the best climbers in the world. So I think it will probably be a sprint again and likely end up being a battle between a Jakobsen and Bennett once again. Stage three, going up to the Autodromo du Visium, which is where Zenik Stiebar won in 2020 with confetti flying everywhere. It was absolutely bloody mental what was going on. It was like a, it was like a, a king returning home or something like that. It was, it was crazy. So more of a puncher-esque style finish. However, last time Milano and Sagan were definitely up there as well. So I'd expect more of the versatile sprinters to be favouring this sort of stage. Guys like a Sagan, a Nizzolo, Viviani, Van Poppel would actually be a really strong candidate as well too and I actually think that Van Poppel will win stage two just because he is more capable of climbing than a Sam Bennett and I think that Van Poppel would be given a free card to go and chase his own opportunity on this stage considering that the other stages he will likely just be a lead out man for Bennett. Stage four Again, probably kind of similar to stage two, there are some categorized climbs early on. However, the latter half of the stage is relatively flat with only a small amount of elevation gain and a category three climb kind of late on. And I don't think it will be challenging enough to get rid of a Jakobsen or a Bennett. I think that their teams will pace this 25 kilometer, 3% climb and allow those guys to stay in there. It doesn't make sense for a team like part of Team Total Energies to pace that climb really hard for Sagan because I just don't think they'll be able to survive until the finish. So I think it will be a sprint again between Jakobsen and Bennett. Stage 5 provides pretty much the only GC opportunity of the week up the Alto Colorado. This is where Miguel Angel Flores won in 2020 and it goes up to over 2,600 meters. It is humongous. However, saying that, it is only an averaging of somewhere between four to 5%. So it's not overly difficult. In fact, in 2020, when we were last here, guys like Ganner and McNulty, who was more of a ruler type, were hanging on re really well here just because those gradients do still provide a draft benefit. So this gives us a chance to talk about the GC riders in this race. Of course, we've got Avonapool here, who's going to be probably the favorite going into this race. But we've also got a plethora of Colombians who are going to be looking to do really well here as well. Guys like Sergio Higuita, Egan Bernal perhaps could do something, depends how he's going after his in his recovery. Danny Martinez, Jonathan Navarez, Aino Rubio, 
And then there's also some other guys like what about Marco Brenner, example for Team DSM, or Antoine Tolhook for Tlex Segafredo. I think they would be up there as well. But arguably one of the most exciting riders to look out for on this stage is going to be the vengeance of Miguel Angel Lopez, who now rides for the Continental Team Team Medellin EPM. And I think that he is going to be looking to really stamp some authority on this, to really stick it to his old team, Astana Kazakhstan, who are also in this race, and just show to the world that he is still one of the best riders and he does deserve to be in the World Tour and kind of just show off a bit and just really kind of stick it to everybody. And I think that is what's going to happen on this stage. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen on this pretty much just one stage shootout in terms of GC. And then stages six and seven will be sprint stages, very uncomplicated. And these two will probably be again between a Jakobsen and a Bennett. The last stage around San Juan, I guess they're trying to reproduce say like a Champs-Élysées or a lap around Madrid or, or Rome or whatever that we have in the Grand Tours but it's around San Juan so yeah I think it'll be Jakobsen or Bennett who are likely taking a lot of these stages. In terms of my predictions for GC I think that given lack of a time trial and because it's only really a one stage shootout in terms of GC I will go in third place to be Sergio Higita of Bora Hansgrohe Second place will be Remco Avenepoel of Sudal Quickstep. And I think in first place will be Miguel Angel Lopez of Team Medellin. Because if you think about it, it's not very often that a team like Team Medellin who, let's face it, they don't get invited to a lot of big races. And this is one of their main objectives for the year in terms of you know sponsor exposure and stuff like that. They don't get a rider like Miguel Angel Lopez very often. So he will probably be peaking in form to do really well in this race to try and give thanks to the team which has given him the opportunity to race this season so I'm going to go with Miguel Angel Lopez to win because there is no time trial for him to lose like minutes of time to Avenapool but let me know what you think in the comments down below who do you think is going to win the race what do you think is going to happen who are you looking forward to seeing and all that is left to say is to keep safe out there and I'll see you in the next video Salut!